Okay, so today I wanted to talk about shutter speed. In particular, I wanted to talk about uh, shutter dragging or shooting at lower shutter speeds. Uh, I would love to talk about step printing and under cranking, maybe in a different video, but when it comes to photography, especially when it comes to creative photography, oh, people are texting me and that's unprofessional. Round two, when it comes to shutter dragging or just any sort of long exposure photography, there are a few key things that you need to keep in mind. I will show you some examples of things that I consider some of my best work when it comes to shutter drags and long exposures, but also just some of my best work in general when it comes to photography. This is my favorite technique to use. It's a great technique to use if you're trying to experiment uh, with quality of light and trying to understand light and lighting subjects. Um, there is a lot more that goes into long exposure work, uh, especially when you're shutter dragging, and there's specific techniques to use when you're trying to get these particular photos. Typically, you're gonna get a lot more sharp images when it comes to shooting one over 60 and above uh, when you're doing wildlife or shooting sports uh, hanging around that 150 and up to that 500 and even beyond mark you're going to get crisp sharp photos uh, and that's what most people start shooting at anyways uh, that's what i started shooting at uh, once you start integrating flash and off-camera flash or strobe and monolite um, typically those lights the sync speed will only work at 125 200 and below anyways uh, and there's a reason for that flash in and of itself pauses and freezes an image okay so that's a good thing that's a good tool to know and to understand but we'll get into that before i had uh, the the mindset or even the ability to shoot with an off-camera flash or a monolite uh, i experimented with long exposures and i'm sure uh, all of you guys have seen pictures of light trails and or have probably shot some of your own light trail photography or long exposure photography. Uh, long exposures will give you that nice, soft, creamy look when there's moving water or smoke. Um, you can make people look like ghosts. You can make people disappear entirely uh, in populated cities or streets, which is a great way to use uh, this technique. Uh, some things you need to think about, though, is having a tripod. A tripod is very important. Um, and or having an off-camera trigger or, God forbid, you don't have that and you just have to push on and have a steady enough finger to press it or, or have that shutter open for a long period of time. Uh, I would say things start getting a, a bit blurry around that 160 and below. Now, playing with that, you can find out some cool and interesting ways of taking the photos. I've done some awesome, interesting portraits where, you know, moving the face, making people blur out and stuff. But I started this video by talking about ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Uh, both of those things manipulate light by, and particularly speaking about shutter speed right now, the longer that shutter is open, the more light has the opportunity to hit the sensor in the back of the camera. Aperture uh, is the dilation of the lens itself. So, you know, smaller iris versus a wide open or a fast or a low f-stop, all those things can start to get confusing. We can talk about that in another video, but those are ways to let light in. Long exposure uh, in terms of the sensor or film stock means you're exposing that sensor film stock to light. Uh, more so than usual so that being said once you're moving the camera around there's gonna be some motion in that when it comes to videography there's interesting ways to make that effect uh you know create certain moods and emotions and especially when you're working with a wider lens or more narrow lens but again, we'll talk about that later. Let me stay focused. When it comes to landscape photography, and I'm shooting uh, with a wide, or, or I'm having a long exposure with my shutter, you can start to play with light painting. You can start to play with composites. So I like to shoot some long exposures during the daytime, especially at the beach. My favorite photos was the 
thumbnail for my last uh, video, but I'll show it. And so when you're doing that, you're gonna have to have something that's usually gonna stop the light down a bit. Uh, neutral density filters are the best things for that or pumping that f-stop all the way up. So when I'm doing a lot more long exposure stuff with my, I'm, I'm usually using an ND on my wider lens. Uh, I have a neutral density filter that's variable for my 85. And then I'll shoot usually at an f-stop around, you know, 10 and above. You can get some very interesting compositions. Uh, now when it comes to, which is my favorite, uh, portrait photography with an off-camera flash or monolight. This is when you can start playing with the light a bit more. Now, some of my specific ways of shooting are studio editorial looks with a bit of light painting, long exposure, uh, shutter drag movement. So in simpler terms, shutter drag is you shoot, the monolight strobe light freezes the subject and then any other uh, ambient light in the room or light that I'm controlling as ambient light, such as these uh, mono continuous lights that I use, uh, RGB or not, uh, even if you're outside, if you're at a garage, if you're uh, at a club, I actually have some club photos with some shutter drag uh, effects. You take the photo with the flash and then you have a longer exposure. So the flash clicks, boom, uh, you can have it one second, two seconds, keep it open for as long as you want. Move the camera around, move it in and out, have a zoom lens on, zoom in and out, make the subject move. Those are the ways in which you're going to manipulate the light afterwards. Now, in theory, uh, you freeze the subject the way they are, and then everything else will be movement afterwards. Now, it's easier said than done a lot of the times, especially if you're shooting uh, at a club uh, for an, a, a wedding as an event. Um, I do events every once in a while and I like to use this effect. It's a cool way to be able to give your client something that is sort of bespoke because it truly is one of a kind to shoot shutter drag photography. It's really hard to replicate a photo uh, the exact same way that you did it before versus when you have uh, any other sort of confined look with the confined uh, you know, costume, hair, and a specific movement that the model makes, that's easier to replicate. But when it comes to shutter drag, the quality of light really matters. But as you can see, you get some very interesting, uh, really cool things that really surprise you in camera. And I think the most important thing about this effect for me is I really do like practical in-camera things. I, I believe Lightroom and Photoshop are great enhancers, but if you can get everything that you would like in-camera first, I think that truly makes the photographer. And again, that goes back to composition and all that stuff. But the camera and, and the editing tools afterwards, are all, they're all just tools. Um, they're, they're your way to show the perceived your perceived world to an audience or it's a lot of time since we're artists and no one at all. But yeah, so this is my, these are my ways of producing these sort of looks when it comes to shutter dragging and or long exposure. And to me, it's a, it's a great way to express uh, a sort of breaking up of the monotony of photography. It's a good way to express um, experimental sort of over-the-top creative uh, ideas that do come out of photography. Um, I'm constantly finding inspiration and Lindsay Adler again is a great example of somebody who uses this technique but with myself I'm finding ways of capturing uh, my subjects sort of innate aura if you will. I'm able to use uh, all my colors. I love my colors, as you guys know. Or, uh, what, this is my third video. I don't know if you guys know or not, but the people are watching currently right now are usually my family members or people coming from Instagram. So, uh, yeah, this is my technique. These are my moves. I just wanted to show you guys that. All right. Have a great rest of your day.